let's take a look at division with decimal quotients. We have 32 divided by 5. Now notice 32 is not going to divide evenly by 5, right? We know that because all the numbers that divide evenly by 5 end in an either 0 or a 5. But we can still divide it. It just means we're not going to get a whole number answer. Okay, notice they said division with decimal quotients. So that's a hint that we want to write our answer as a decimal. So we're going to say 32 divided by 5. Okay, and when I'm working with a division problem that I know is not going to come out evenly, I like to write it this way, 32 divided by 5, because it makes it a little easier to see what's going on. Now remember, 32 is the same thing as 32.0. So you can always put 0 .0 on the end of any whole number. And in fact, I could put as many zeros as I needed to on the end. And when you do that, if you make it 32.0, you need to make sure that you line up that decimal point in your answer as well. Okay, and now I'm gonna think, well, five does not go into three, five does go into 32. Well, how many times would five go into 32? Well, six times, right? Five times six would give us 30. Now notice it does not go in evenly because five times six gives us 30, not 32. So what I would need to do is subtract my 30, right, that was five times six, from the 32 to see what I have left. And it gives me two, right, 32 minus 30 is two. Now one way that we've seen in the past would be to write this as a remainder, right? We could say that gives us six remainder two. We've seen that already. But if you don't wanna write it with a remainder, if you wanna write it with a decimal instead, we could simply keep going, right? We brought our decimal point up here. We said 32.0 is the same thing as 32. So what I could do instead of writing the remainder is I can bring down the zero. And now I can say, well, how many times does five go into 20? Five goes into 20 exactly four times, right? Five times four gives us exactly 20. So if I subtract that, I have zero. So now I'm down to a point with no remainder. So instead of saying six remainder two, a nice way to write this as a decimal is to say 6.4, right? That 0.4 means four tenths. And it's just a nice precise way to write our answer, 6.4. Okay, 16 divided by five. Okay, well, just like in the last problem, 16 does not divide evenly by five, right? Things that divide by five end in five or zero. But I can still divide it. I'm just not gonna get a whole number answer if it does not divide evenly. So I'm gonna think of this as 16 divided by five, just written a different way. And of course, I know 16 is the same thing as 16.0. So since I know it's not gonna work out evenly, I can set myself up to write this answer as a decimal by thinking of it as 16.0. And then wherever the decimal point is here, I'm gonna make sure I line up that decimal point in my answer. Okay, well, how many times does five go into 16? Well, five goes into 16 three times, right? Five times three is 15. Okay, well, if I subtract that, Right, five times two is only 15, not 16. So if I subtract it, I have one left over. And again, instead of saying remainder one, we wanna get a decimal answer. So what I'm gonna do is bring down my zero. And now I can think, well, how many times does five go into 10? Five goes into 10 exactly two times, right? Five times two is exactly 10. So since I subtract that and get zero, I know my problem is done. If it wasn't exact, I could keep bringing down as many zeros as I need. So 16 divide, divided by 5 is exactly 3.2. 14 divided by 4. Okay, well, again, does not divide evenly. So I know I want to write it this way, 14 divided by 4. And I'm going to write that 14 as a decimal, right? 14 is the same thing as 14.0.
And of course, I'm gonna bring the decimal point directly above here in my answer as well. All right, well, how many times does four go into 14? A little more than three times, because three times four gives us 12. Okay, so if I subtract that, I'm gonna be left over with two. And again, instead of saying three remainder two, we want a decimal version. So what I'm gonna do is bring down that zero that I have after the decimal point, and now I can think to myself, well, how many times is four gonna go into 20? Four goes into 20 exactly five times, right? Four times five is 20. And since I subtract that and I get to zero, I know my problem is now finished. 14 divided by four is 3.5. Thirty-five divided by two. Okay, well we know that thirty-five is not going to divide evenly by two because it's not an even number, right? Only even numbers, things that end in zero, two, four, six, or eight, are going to divide evenly by two. But I can still divide it. I'm just going to set it up this way: thirty-five divided by two. And of course, thirty-five is the same thing as thirty-five point zero. So I can set myself up for my decimal answer by lining up those decimal points. Okay, well how many times, well two goes into three, so I can think about just that first digit first. How many times does two go into three? Two goes into three one time, right? That's two times one or two. So I would need to subtract that and I still have a one left over. Now I would bring down that five that I have in the ones place and now I'm thinking, well, how many times does two go into 15? Well, a little more than seven times because seven times two is 14. Okay, and if I subtract that, 15 minus 14, I'm left over with one. So I'm gonna bring down my zero and now I'm thinking of that as 10. Well, how many times does two go into 10 exactly five times, right? Two times 10 is exactly 10. So now I have zero left over and I know the problem is done. So I get 17.5. 31 divided by two. All right, well, just like our last problem, it's not gonna divide evenly because only even numbers divide evenly by two. So that would be numbers that end in zero, two, four, six, or eight. So I'm gonna set this up, 31 divided by two. And of course I can think of 31 as 31.0. And I'm just gonna line up my decimal point. Okay, well two goes into three, so I'm gonna take this one digit at a time. Two goes into three one time, right? If I subtract the two, that's gonna leave me with one. And then I'm gonna bring down the one here. Now I'm thinking, how many times does two go into 11? Well, two goes into 11 five times, right? Two times five would give us 10. So if I subtract that, I have one left over. Okay, and two doesn't go into one, so now I have to bring down this zero and think of that as a 10. Well, two goes into 10 five times, Right, two times five is exactly 10. So I wind up with 